So in this problem, we're told a Ferris wheel 22 meters in diameter rotates once every 12.5 seconds. What is the ratio of a person's apparent weight to her real weight, A at the top and B at the bottom? So essentially in this problem, we're going to be solving for a ratio of apparent weight to real weight. And so first, let's understand what that means. So when they're talking about apparent weight, what they're talking about essentially is the normal force, because a normal force is essentially or when they refer to apparent weight, they're talking about this. And it's basically your weight, depending like it can change, right? Because your your real weight is always your mass times gravity, but your apparent weight can change depending on the scenario. So when they're talking about your apparent rate uh, weight to your real weight, they're basically talking about the ratio of F sub n divided by mg. So what they want us to do in each of these problems is solve for the normal force at each of these points so we can get the uh, ratio. So that's what we're trying to solve for. Um, and yeah, so what we need to do is find the normal force at each of these points. Uh, the way we do it first is we're going to draw a free body diagram of what's going on at each point. So uh, we know at this point we have mg going down. Uh, and then the normal force is going to be pushing up against them on the seat, right? So you imagine their seat and it's going to be pushing up against them. And then here you once again have mg going down and then the normal force is pushing up against their seat. Okay, cool. Um, and so now that we know that, the way you solve for the normal force or any force for that matter is you sum the forces along that direction. So let's start with A and we're going to sum the forces uh, right here. So keep in mind we're summing the forces along the y. So I can say the sum of the forces in the y equal. And so in this case, we know that we're rotating like this. And when you when we're rotating like that, we have to do m a sub c. So you do the centripetal acceleration or the acceleration when rotating like this. Uh, we're not just normal m a. Uh, but basically, the sum of the forces would equal m a c. And then you just add up the forces. So when you're doing a rotating problem like this, you say it's positive if it points inwards in a in na or negative if it points out uh, outwards. So in this case, we have mg minus f sub n, right? And the reason that is is because um, f sub n is pointing upwards, outwards, and then mg is inwards. So basically, this will tell you f sub n is equal to uh, just moving this to the other side and then moving this back mg minus a sub c. So this will make sense because we know we have ma mg, but we have to subtract the centripetal acceleration uh, because that's going to causing us to go up like this a bit. Uh, but yeah, so uh, notice for this, we need to find the centripetal acceleration that it's going to be experiencing. Uh, and we do that by using this information here. So using our diameter and time, uh, we know that a sub c equals v squared over r, where r is the radius, v is the velocity, um, we know the radius is just 11 meters, right? Because you know radius equals half the diameter. You should know that. Uh, so it's 11 meters. And then we need the velocity. So if this is 11. Uh, we need the velocity now. Um, for the velocity, uh, you should know V equals omega R, where omega is equal to 2 pi divided by the period. So the velocity in this case is uh, 2 pi times the radius divided by t the period, which is the amount of time it takes to do one completion, which is just 12.5 seconds. They tell us that. So solving for this 2 pi times r, which is 11 divided by 12.5. So plug this in 2 times pi times 11 dividing by 12.5. You're going to get the velocity is equal to 5.5 uh, 5.529, so 5.529, uh, and then keep in mind this value squared. So if I square this value, divide by 11, you will get 2.779, which is just about 2.78, uh, and then the units are going to be meters per second squared, since this is acceleration. So now that we want to find the normal force, it's really just a matter of plugging it in. So Factoring out the m, you have its mass um, times g minus a c. So keep in mind it's going to be equal to, or f sub n is equal to m times 
minus 2.78, we'll say, 2.78. So 9.8 minus 2.78, you get F sub n equals m, or just 7.02m. And so we don't know the mass, but it'll cancel. So uh, we have F sub n equals 7.02. And then to find the ratio, it's 7.02m divided by mg. So m's will cancel. 7.02 divided by 9.8, you get it equals 7 point, or sorry, 0 0.716. Uh, yeah, so 0 0.716, that's going to be the ratio. So your answer to A, the ratio of the apparent weight to the real weight is 0 0.716. So you should know that our apparent weight is less than the real weight. So that's why this number is less than one. If it was greater, uh, right, our apparent weight would, or the person would feel like they are much heavier than uh, they actually are. Um, and then let's go ahead and do B now. So for B, we're doing at the bottom, uh, but it's essentially the same process. Nothing actually changes. Um, but yeah, so once again, you sum the forces because we need to get the normal force. It equals MAC. Uh, but what changes here is the direction of the forces. So as I said before, F sub n, or if it points inwards, it's positive. So in this case, F sub n is positive, mg is negative. So in this case, uh, it was the opposite because of the way they're pointing. But F sub n is positive minus mg because it's negative. So in this case, we're actually adding them. So this should tell you that our apparent weight is going to be greater than uh, the real weight this time. So. Uh, yeah, so we do M A C plus uh, G. Keep in mind this centripetal acceleration is the same no matter where you are on, right? It's just accelerating the whole thing. So uh, A sub C doesn't change. So it's M times two points. I believe the value, yeah, seven eight. So two point seven eight plus G, uh, which is the acceleration due to gravity, uh, just a constant value. Uh, so plus nine point eight. So F sub n is 12.58 m. And then once again, just do the ratio. So uh, it's going to be 12.58 m over mg. So these cancel once again. Uh, and then you're just dividing by 9.8. Doing that, you will get it equals 1. Point, yeah, 1.28. So notice the value is greater for this one. So... 1.28, that's your ratio, and your answer to B. Uh, but yeah, so notice in this one, it's less than the real weight. This one is greater, or the apparent weight is greater than the real weight. Uh, but yeah, so mainly the main takeaway from this problem is uh, that you need to know that normal force is basically what they mean by apparent weight, because if you didn't know that, you're not going to be able to solve the problem. Uh, and then basically just summing the forces and solving for centripetal acceleration. Uh, but yeah, so these are your two answers and uh, hopefully you found uh, this video useful.